Good morning. Oh my gosh, somebody turned the heater off on me in here and it is freezing. Freezing. In fact, the heater is, oh no, it is blowing. It feels like it's blowing cold air right now. It's okay, we'll be warmed up in a moment. It's actually beautiful out. Just got back from walking my son. And it's so nice, it's supposed to be so nice tomorrow. We get a nice little reprieve. Aren't these little reprieves just like Canadian heaven? <laughs> reprieves in the middle of winter. <laughs> All right, let's get started. How, how are you? How's everybody doing? Is everybody recovered from Super Bowl Sunday and Valentine's Monday? So much um, celebrating and feasting. Oh, we also we had uh, Chris's mother's funeral on Sunday, so <clears throat> which was really nice to get the closure and. You know, as sad as these things are, it's nice to see family and see people we haven't seen since the last wedding or funeral kind of thing. Uh, Sunday was, <coughs> so it was really, it was nice, as nice as it can be. Um, there's like almost this uh, peace or, it's funny because even the pastor commented on how well the family was like dealing with her passing because we all feel like she's gone off to join her late husband who passed a year and a half ago. So, <clears throat> um, and then Super Bowl Sunday, well, we ate and ate. <laughs> it was it was a <coughs> high level of tracking that night. Let's put it that way, tracking and snacking, and then. We had baseball last night, so Valentine's, we never, Chris and I both worked in restaurants for years, like we, like many years of our lives we were in restaurants, so neither of us like to go out on the actual token holiday, because it's too busy, and uh, we know how tired and frazzled the staff is, and we rather just go on an off day, celebrate it in and around the, the, the time period of the holiday, but not on the holiday. <coughs> so we'll probably go out tonight or tomorrow before he returns to work to save the city of Toronto. <coughs> so as we come to the conclusion of the round, first round of warm-ups, we always do three rounds of warm-ups. Just want to remind you to take kind of an assessment of your body, how are you feeling today. Are you a little bloated and full from, the, or did you, I saw that Andrea didn't even eat on Super Bowl Sunday. I was like, oh my God, beast, beast motor, what? Holy moly, you guys are like crushing that challenge that I put out. I, honestly, when I put out that challenge, I expected everyone to ignore me. <laughs> I expected there to be 100% crickets in that group um, for the month of February. I can't believe you guys are like, man, like I'm, I'm like, these guys are, are no joke. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so back to warm up. We're about to finish the low impact round and add some hopping and jumping and increase the intensity a little bit, which I need because I got to get warm up, warmed up in here. But remember, the hopping and jumping for the whole workout is optional. If you're not ready to increase intensity like that yet, then don't do it. Just stick to this um, low impact version of all of the moves that we do. Basically, I'm gonna add a hop to the exact same move. So you can keep marching or you can add a hop. And that goes for the whole workout. <coughs> you can increase intensity and effort if you're ready, if you're there, if it's a great day, or if you need to scale back um, you can stick to low intensity or no intensity, no, not no intensity, no impact. <laughs> no intensity would be sitting on the couch watching the Olympics. <laughs> so take an assessment of your body. How are you feeling today? You can feel my ankle is a little bit fussy today because we did all that jumping on Thursday, which felt great, and then I ran on it. Friday and Saturday, 
and yesterday uh, in the trails, which are a little still rutted from uh, footprints in the snow. So it definitely works it. How are you feeling? You know, or where are you stiff? Where are you? Do you need to maybe stretch or, you know, do some yoga afterwards, maybe once you're all warmed up? I am going to incorporate <laughs> stretching. When I'm in the warmth of the south, I decided that's when I'm going to start my stretching and yoga. Trying to get some mobility back. Um, I think it was Kelly sent me. Sorry, I'm just thinking. Was like, Kelly sent me a book about um, stiffness in the body, so I'm interested to look into that. I'm actually feeling a million times better this week than I was last week. Like my energy's back up. Uh, it's funny because when you don't feel yourself, you're like, oh, what's what's wrong? What's going on? Am I getting sick? Am I, you know, training too much? Am I, what, what is, you try to, or I do anyways, I like to problem solve. I like to feel good and I like to figure out, well, what's going on? And sometimes it's just the, this is a bit woo-woo, but I had, I used to have a client who liked to study the moon, like lunar patterns. And she would always say that during certain lunar patterns, I don't know them, I don't study them, but people's energies and moods shift according to, so it makes sense to me because we are very much creatures of energy. We react and respond to energy if we're not careful, right? Like if somebody's really foul and grouchy around us, we feel our energy dip. Some are similarly, if we're in a great mood, we go into a store and we're smiling at people, like we can lift their energy. So we're very much, everything has an energy. The late Bob Proctor used to say, you know, there's a vibration to everything. And anyways, I feel like sometimes <coughs> there's energy shifts in the grand scheme of the world that we don't necessarily know about. That, like January, <laughs> January was an energy shift that was like this for like the month, <laughs> for me anyways, for a lot of people, you can kind of see. Then you get a day like today, where the temperatures are rising, the sun is shining, and you just feel your energy rock it up. Am I right? <laughs> Tomorrow, I think it's supposed to be eight degrees. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be sunny. I'm going to cross my fingers. Because what better gift in the middle of February is there other than warmth and sun in the same day? Because <laughs> we don't get the 11 key winters too. We get cold sun or warm snow or rain. <laughs> nine days out before I leave for my trip. I can't come soon enough, not going to lie. <laughs> I've got piles of stuff all over my house ready to get packed. I've got my piles of clothes in my room, piles of food in my, in my living room. <sighs> so I've gone for a month. <coughs> so I wanted to take as much as I can. And I'm hoping, oh man, I'm hoping that they lift some of the restrictions, restrictions this week. At the current moment, my husband cannot come. But I'm hoping, praying, crossing my fingers, manifesting my little face up, that that changes and that he can come. If anyone needs a vacation right now, it's him. If anyone needs to get away, it's definitely him. He's such a good sport. He's here and there about it. <coughs> but 
Right now it's just me and my littlest, and he's so excited to have me all to himself. <laughs> Eight. 
So grab some of your weight. How's everyone doing? Who's joining me today? I know I have Betty and Dawn. I think Kathy's there. <laughs> All right, ready for step up? So we're doing 30 second intervals. Okay, ready? Going. Starting light. So what we're going to do is alternating feet. So setting up, alternating foot. So if you, you don't have a big step like I have, you might have one of those old step aerobic steps that works. You might have a stair in your house. Um, in the summer outside, when I did my workout outside, I used a cooler. You need a pretty sturdy cooler. Okay, and then we're going to go to suitcase squats. Okay, we're starting with squats today. Suitcase squats, so two weights. Okay, so I want your chest out. Chest is out, butt is dropping, keeping that those knees behind the big toes. Oh my goodness, these weights are cold. Driving up in your squat, driving up over the middle of your foot. So your, your weight is somewhat balanced on your toes and your heels. So we're alternating those for eight. <coughs> Eight sets, so that's one. Four sets, sorry. Four sets in total. So try, if you're wanting to use the step ups for cardio, try to go as fast as you can. If you get that hurried up, get yourself sweating. The alternative is you can go heavier with your weights. In which case you'll slow it down, but you're going to be targeting more strength. So depending what you're after today, um, as women, women are often, well, I shouldn't generalize this, but women are, can be nervous about lifting heavy weights and, and doing too much strength work. And often when we're trying to lose weight or tone down or trim fat, whatever you want to call it, we tend to be inclined towards cardio, right? Cardio, well, you love or you hate cardio. Definitely there's cardio junkies who love it. You just, you get the, you get the sweat, which makes you feel accomplished, right? You get the endorphins, you know, the high heart rate. You're winded, you feel like you've worked really hard. <coughs> you don't get quite the same with um, strength work, right? You don't get the same high necessarily. You don't get the same sense of work, right? But I will tell you, you will transform your body um, exponentially faster and more effectively by doing more strength work, by doing more resistance. And the heavier weight that you can do with correct form, of course, the more you're going to see your body change. Because what you're doing is you're actually, you're actually changing your body. Um, cardio, cardio targets more, yes, you can definitely trim fat with cardio. Um, you will, will improve your cardiovascular health, your heart health, your, you'll lower your heart rate, um, all that good stuff. So cardio is more, I would say, health beneficial. Um, versus transformational. Um, you, you can see it if you go to any marathon. You'll see a number of 
people completing 42.2 kilometers or 26 miles, but they're still what we would consider overweight. Um, I guess I would almost argue, too, you go in a CrossFit gym and you don't see that, right? Because those, those guys are more, in, more focused on strength. So the trick is when you build muscle, which requires resistance training, like it requires loading your muscles, breaking them down so that they have to rebuild stronger. It requires working them and challenging them. Um, when you build muscle, you actually do lose fat, right? Like because your muscle kind of, you, you change your body composition is, is I guess, um, what, we're, what we're after. When you lose muscle, through, when you lose weight through cardio, you actually do lose muscle too. Um, so sometimes you don't see massive transformations physically because you're actually getting rid of the tissue that you want to keep as well as the tissue that you don't want to keep. So anyways, it's a lot more complicated than that, obviously, than what I'm saying, but don't be afraid to lift heavier weights. Um, obviously, you want good form always. Challenge yourself to a weight that feels hard and you <coughs> have a hard time, especially with the last couple of reps. If you're executing easily, your body's already down. Like to, to change your body, to transform your body, it the good and bad thing about our bodies is they're very quick to adapt. So they will very quickly adapt to whatever stress you put in place upon it, which is crazy. So you constantly have to be changing it in order to be constantly changing and improving your body. <coughs> okay, the next one we're doing we're sticking with step ups, we're going to do some lateral squats. Those lovelies that we did a couple weeks ago that crushed out all of our soles. Well, not so much our soles, our legs and our butts. So we're going to alternate between step ups and side lunges. I was feeling very optimistic bringing these ones in, but I'm not sure I'm going to use those. Okay, so let's start with our <coughs> step ups again. Same thing, alternating sides with step ups. You can go fast if you're, like I said, looking to drive. One of, I think, on that note, the best ways to really be effective is to combine. And they say, for like a lot of older uh, fitness trainers who specialize in kind of 50, 40, 50 plus. <coughs> Training. Talking about hit training, they talk about short bouts of high intensity, so that we're not stressing our adrenals, so that we're not um, increasing cortisol and messing around with hormones. Right. So a lot of people, trainers, talk about high intensity interval, which is kind of what we do here. Um, although a lot of our focus is strength-based. Um, and low, low, low end cardio. So things like walking to keep your you know, low steady state cardio, which is actually great for fat burning, but is also not going to increase stress hormones. So combining, especially once the weather gets nicer, these workouts with getting out and walking, um, is a great way to improve health. I think too, like, we talked about this in my coaching group a few weeks ago. I think forcing ourselves outside every single day, especially, especially in the winter, and especially on the days you don't want to go outside, and there's a number of them in the winter, is really good for the soul, really good for the mood, um, really good for those, I'm just going to call them emotional hormones. <laughs> I don't know what they're actually called, but so if this is hard on your knees, remember you can do knees. 
So side squats instead of the side lunges. Or you can just squat. You can also, if you have a hard time with these and your knees, do them with no weights. I like them, I don't have bad knees, but I like them because they open up my hips and they increase range of motion for me in a way that I need. <laughs> Um, so I challenge them, I challenge my coaching group to get outside for a minimum of 10 minutes each day to walk or do, I'm like, I don't really care what you do, but get outside and get fresh air and face the days where you're really inclined to want to stay inside because it does two things. First of all, I think outdoors is therapeutic for our souls and we honestly... Whether you're coping well or you're coping poorly right now, we can all use a little dose of nature, of sunshine, of fresh air to, you know, improve the mood and improve just our, even our air quality, right? Like, the air quality in the winter when we're inside all the time, I think affects, affects our breathing and, and whatnot as well. So I challenge them to do 10 minutes every single day in February. A short month, it's only 28 days, um, outside, get that fresh air. One more, I think, yeah. Whew. So our theme today is step ups, as you can tell. I ordered some new clothes <laughs> online. Uh, Facebook is doing a really good job right now of putting clothing in my face that looks great online that I'm sure I'll get and look hideous on me. I ordered a, a jumpsuit, like a onesie or whatever they're called. It's like a tank up top. I don't even actually remember what it looked like because Facebook seems to know that I love a jumpsuit. I don't own a jumpsuit. I feel like, what do you guys think? They don't look good on short people. <laughs> um, they tend to look better on long, tall, skinny bodies with, oh, I don't have the curves in the right place. They just never suit me as much as I've always wanted one. Anyways, Facebook keeps putting jumpsuits from Old Navy, from Eddie Bauer, from RW and Co. I didn't even shop there. Uh, so I gave and I bought one. I almost bought the RW one. It was this bright jade green. I thought, ooh, I think I like that color for me. Uh, and I don't remember. The reviews were not very good. So I didn't get it. And then Facebook just kept showing me. So I ended up getting one from Eddie Power. So we'll see. I, I see trucks going by, so is it my jumpsuit? Um, it's probably what could yes. Probably what could yes. And I bought a nice tank top, not tank top, like a blouse from Banana Republic. <coughs> that was like, you know how Gap it was like discounted and then discounted again. And by the time it got to the checkout, it was like, it started out at like $90 and it was like $18 or something crazy like that with free shipping. So, hopefully I like it. I hate shopping, you guys. Like literally hate, hate. Okay, so we're doing step ups and now we're doing front lunges this time. And again, if lunges are hard on your knees, adapt, modify to whatever you need to. <coughs> Remember the goal is for you to be here, showing up, doing the work, getting it done, right, and modifying whatever you need to, meeting yourself where you're at today, right, whether that means it's a heavy bloated nacho, nachos running through your veins from Super Bowl kind of day, or whether it's, hey, I haven't moved my body in months and I'm just starting, because spring is around the corner, and I want to give myself time, right? So, or you're coming back from an injury, or 
Fine, and whatever your circumstances are, know that you got to meet yourself where you're at today. I had, a, I had such a long talk with my daughter. I drove her back to Hamilton yesterday. <coughs> she came home for the funeral on the weekend. And she, used, she went to school on a running scholarship. So she, she started running competitively in grade 9. She's dumb. <laughs> she's terrible. I was faster than her in grade 9. Um, she trained. She joined a running club. This is so characteristic of my daughter. She stunk. She couldn't keep up. She went back week after week after week. I would pick her up crying often because she couldn't keep up in the warm-up. <laughs> Never mind the actual workout. But that girl, she just kept going back. And a year later, we should do a live on this way. She tell this story publicly because I'm all about trying to tell people. Have some stinking patience. My God, give it a year, <laughs> right? So, anyways, literally, I would pick her up. I remember it was winter. They would, they would run on an indoor track, but they would do their warm ups outside. And these are, this is a club. This is a competitive running club. Their warm ups are like five to seven kilometers <laughs> long. Uh, and so she. Her strategy was to start at the front with the fastest people because she was afraid that if she started at the back with the slowest people, she would get dropped right away and left. So she would start at the front with the fastest people, which anybody who knows anything about running knows that is like the worst strategy because that means they're going to crush you and you're going to die slow death or fast death and then not be able to hang on at all. So, anyways, it never worked, but she kept trying that. Every week, somebody would have to go back for her. She was so embarrassed. <coughs> but she kept going back. She kept going back. I don't really know why. Not many smart people would just do such a thing. And I remember that spring, going to her cross-country race, and she came out of, so the cross-country, they go into the forest, and you wait and you watch. They come out of the forest. She was with the lead runners, and I was like, "Oh my goodness, what is happening right now?" She's usually mid to back of the pack. I was, I still remember that day. I remember her coming out of the forest with the top girls and being like, I think she came fourth, and I was like, "Holy crap, what happened?" But she consistently worked at something that was really uncomfortable for her, and lo and behold, over the course of a year, oh, we have one more step, so I'll the last one, um, she got better. Anyway, so she went on and had a great high school career, competing, cross-country, she was amazing at. Um, she secured a scholarship at McMaster University. She raced her first year, her second year, and then COVID hit. And um, she also had some health issues with, we, we joke that she's allergic to exercise, but she has a rash when she sweats, <laughs> like hives, she gets hives. Um, which is crazy, I've never seen such a thing, like literally hives all over her body from her own sweat. Uh, so it got worse and worse to the point where she actually needed to get an EpiPen because she would her tongue would swell up and her lips would swell up. And, and then COVID hit. So it was a convenient opportunity to let running go. Anyway, so we had this talk on the way back. And she said, I don't, I miss running. I said, running is like a friend. <laughs> Those of you who run can know, know what I mean. Running is like a friend who serves different purposes in your life at different times. So running was, was performance for all those years. It was performance and it was achievement. And um, as somebody who's been running since she was born, it was my friend um, to lose the baby weight. And then it was my friend because I needed 
um, to talk to adults. Like it was, I needed, I needed a sense of achievement in my life. So it just, it was, it played all these roles in my life over the years. And so we had this talk about her looking at running as a friend, not an enemy. And okay, we're doing. Just trying to decide which ones. I'll do these. The last one we're doing step ups and uh, deadlifts. <coughs> so I said, look at running as your friend and use it for what you need it to support you with now. But so where, where I was getting at this really long story was she she's embarrassed for people to see her running and see that she's slower. She's you know gained a few pounds. Not that she's by no stretch is she overweight. She just isn't. Look, it doesn't look like a scrawny little runner anymore. Um, she's like, I don't want people to see me running and see how slow I am. And I, you know, so we, the, po the point of all of that, I've lost, I've forgotten. Other than looking at things to serve a different role, and I think my point was, you can't get it back without starting. You know, I used the example of Max Perot, who had cancer, was in the hospital, right? So top level Olympian athlete, down to, not back to ground zero again, right? Had to start all over again. We all have to start all over sometimes, right? That's, that was my point. We all have to start all over again, and if you don't start, you don't move forward, stay the same. So meeting yourself where you're at, saying, hey, this is where I'm at today. Letting go of all the judgment and criticism. Letting go of why you got there, how you got there. Doesn't matter, because it doesn't change the fact that you're there. And taking the tiny steps to move forward. Right? So if that means you're modifying everything that I'm doing right now, that doesn't make you a failure, failure make you a success for starting, right? Because, lo and behold, if you continue to do that in a few weeks, you're doing 25% of what I'm doing. And then, and then you're going to do 50% of what I'm doing. Then you're going to do eventually 100% and probably do better than me, like Betty <laughs> is doing more than what I'm doing. Right? So, okay, so it, with these deadlifts, I want you to think arched back. Okay, so cocked butt. Um, chest is open, straight-ish legs, soft bend in the knee, you don't want to squat, you're hinging from the hips, so you're bending from the hips, you're keeping that belly button pulled in, I should have had the heavier ones for this one, you're driving up through the back of the leg, this works your entire posterior chain, which is all your muscles in the back of your body. Anyone sick of step ups yet? <laughs> it's climbing Tuesday. I've been slacking on my climbing. I haven't been doing a very good job. I'm going to jump on the treadmill and climb a little today over a phone call that I have. I said, Yes, I'm available for that phone call, but I'm going to be on my treadmill. So I'm making myself climb. A lot of it's just boredom. The treadmill, I watch stuff, but actually that's not true. The last couple of weeks it was, it was fatigue. And uh, that seems to be lifted now. Oh, that's much harder and heavier. Do you want to feel like it's a little bit hard? If it's not a little bit hard, it's not going to change you. Remember Brunel's story. It changed her because she faced that comfort zone every week. <laughs> Honestly, I always give her credit for that because she's one of those people that she gets upset easily, but she can be talked down easily. So I would pick her up and she'd be all upset. And then I would give her some encouraging words and she'd be fine. So
think the moral of the story is she had to bite her pride all those months. And she has to remember, we sometimes, when we do it for the first time and it's new, it's easier. We don't have expectations of ourselves. But when we go back and knowing what we achieved in the past, you know, knowing how fit you once were, right, we can, we can, be, we can beat ourselves up. And that's what we need to not do. We need to just accept where you're at today, move forward from it, and, and then be patient and give it time. And that is it. I thought that was it. I was like, one more. Way to go, ladies. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you tomorrow for Upper Body Day. Have an awesome day. Enjoy the sunshine and this slight rise in temperatures. <laughs> Have a great day.